The federal statistical system has been operating almost since the beginning of our nation. Here, we see a picture of the population of the United States at the very beginning, 1790. This was a time when what had been 13 colonies still had the wilderness at their very backyards. Then we see 1800, 1810, 20, 30, 40, all the way through 1890. We see the growth of our nation, how the people spread across the continent, how they pushed that frontier line further and further into the West. Until in 1890, we see a country that, given the locations of major cities that had grown up, looks quite a lot like ours today, actually. Here we see a map. It's a wealth map from 1870. And it shows the concentrations of wealth in the eastern half of the nation at that time. Now remember, this is 1870. It's right after the Civil War. It's about five years later. And you can see the difference between North and South, how the South has been, in many places, emptied out of wealth. This is a highly detailed map. You can actually focus in on Georgia and you can see the path that Sherman took as he marched to the sea, destroying that which he could along the way to remove the South's ability to wage war. This is a more modern map. Also economics, but income this time instead of wealth. Average household income on the county level. And there are uh, two, ver there's, uh, two colors represented on this map. In this particular version, you see, all those counties in green are places where there is a uh, average household income of $32,000 or more. The areas in gray are those areas with less on average than $32,000 of income per household. And looking at these two maps side by side, is there anyone who could argue against the importance of history? And that's what's really in the federal statistical system. It is nothing less than the history of the United States in numbers at the neighborhood level. That's what's there and that's what I'm hoping we can deliver in the coming weeks and months.